welcome back to Nomadically Speaking. You know, we've been discussing a lot about uh, travel in Colombia. Uh, put a lot of emphasis on Medellin, Colombia, and kind of what's the what's been going on in Colombia as a whole. Uh, the last video we talked about you being careful on Tinder dates, and most of you guys shouldn't even deal with Tinder. But <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode, we got something a little bit different for y'all. This is a story of a guy who um, who escaped an attempted kidnapping and potentially more. And I and I'm really I want to say this is probably one of the most profound stories I've heard. Um, I want I 100 percent believe this guy. And I think that it is important that we get the information out. So um, without further ado, I would like for him to tell his own story. So let's cut to the footage. I went to Guadalupe, Rio Negro, Bayo. Two weeks I'm out there chilling. The first day I get pickpocketed, but after that, you know, it was all good. And Andres is the person who taking me to all these different places. And like I said before, he took me to his mom mail shop. Everything seemed cool. And they, he just turned out to seem like he was a cool person. So one night he asked me, hey, you want to go see some fireworks in the mountains? And I'm out there vlogging. I'm about to do a story on what I feel like Columbia is. I still got footage and everything. And, you know, I still plan to put that out because I feel like it is a beautiful place to see. But being the fact that I went through what I went through, I would tell people to maybe think twice because now I'm hearing all other type of stories of, you know, similar situations. But to get back to that night, I get on my motorcycle and we ride up to the mountains. It's a lot of people. This is a big festival. It's a firework festival and everybody watching fireworks on the mountain. And I got my A7 III. Um, I'm not dressing flashy. I don't have a chain on. Like everybody, like I wasn't flashy or nothing. I'm blending in. The only thing that I got on me that could be like, you know, a value is my camera. And as intelligent as everybody think they are, there's always these isolated situations that we find ourselves in and we find ourselves on the other side of a gun and in these situations. I would also say, I mean, just now it's a new added tip is don't go to the hood. What are you going to the hood in Medellin for with, you know, expensive camera gear and stuff like this ain't a movie set. This is real life. These people are trying to pay their bills and try to take care of their family. And we are making ourselves a target going into these communities with three and four thousand dollars worth of items on us. I'm going to be honest with you. Think about these. These people are four thousand dollars. They These guys ain't making that in a few years. And you walk up with four grand on you in one time. You are basically, you know, you taunting them. You know what I mean? And. I don't know all the peculiars of this situation, I'll no do, nor do I want to find myself in this situation. I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to educate and to show y'all another story of a foreigner, a tourist that found themselves in a situation that they almost couldn't get out of. So uh, let's get back to the footage. So I'm up there shooting videos. It seemed cool. Now, this is where it get tricky, because when we went up there, it was me, Andres, Andres' little brother, and his little brother girl. The festival was over. So we waiting for Andres' little brother and his girl because they got lost in the crowd. So we let pretty much the whole party like kind of like exit, and now it's only a couple people up here, and we find them. When we find them, all of a sudden, a group of guys come, and Andres, these is Andres' friends. So they got to stop talking, chopping it up, and then they start offering me drugs and stuff, asking me, do I want cocaine? Do I want to do this or that? And I don't do drugs. I told them, yo amo mi cuerpo, mi alma. That means, you know, I love my body, I respect my soul, por favor. No quiero, I don't want it. So they got to looking at me greasy. Like, you know, I was too good to party with him or whatever. So I'm like, and then they get to talking greasy. They speak in Spanish. And, you know, one of the dudes told me, um, estás conmigo ahora, like, you with me now. And I'm like, you know, I've never even seen these guys before. So I'm looking at Andres and, you know, I'm just trying to peep him out and kind of looking weird. He dip off to the side, say something to his little brother and his little brother and his little girl start walking off. And I said, hey, 
¿Dónde estás, hermanito? Like, where your little brother going? He said, we're going to catch up to the morita later. And I'm like, well, hey, estoy listo ahora. I'm ready right now. And he kept on telling me to wait. But the only reason we only stopped was to go get them. So in my head, I'm like, man, something ain't right. And he acting weird. So I get to walking. And when I get to walking towards his little brother and his girl, I look back. Andres is walking the opposite direction. His friends is following me. You know, um, you know, when we were younger, our parents would say, don't talk to strangers. Um, I still keep that to this day. You know, um, I think there's a level of naiveness that we carry as a tourist in other countries we want to believe that everybody's inherently nice and i and what we have to realize is when anytime you're spending money anybody's nice to you so remove the, the this thinking that because people smile at you they are your friends i don't care how long you've been knowing them especially if it's only been a few weeks uh so I slowed down a little bit and trying to see if he gonna like turn around and he didn't. His friends that caught up to me. So and then they formed like a formation, two in the front, two in the back. So I stopped and I just dart off and start running. And when I start running, they start tr trotting behind me, whistling and shit. And I'm like, damn, why is they whistling? I get to the opening, like, you know, I'm getting closer down to my motorcycle and it's some old dudes waiting on me. So they kind of forming a line and then this dude's behind me. I stop in the middle and I turn around to the first group of dudes who initially I seen were Andres, which was, I feel like was Andres friends. And he told me the same thing, estas, con, estas conmigo, like you with me now. Estas conmigo ahora, he kept on saying that to me. And I'm like, man, why the fuck he keep on? I turn around before I know somebody tried to grab me. And then that's why I can't, I'm like, I can't even reveal damn near what happened after that like that because it's just like you know to be putting myself in jeopardy but that's why i'm like man i broke first breath down he kind of backed up and somebody tried to charge me i had got on him in a way where it's like you know you can't really just be saying shit like that um you feel me but i had i had all action to jump off this cliff it had like a divider rail right there for so people don't you know go over it but I jumped off that motherfucker. When I jumped off that motherfucker, I didn't know it was that high. I hit a tree. I hit like a branch hella hard. Then I hit the ground. When I hit the ground, my leg snapped. And and for the people saying, how you running with a broke leg? Wow. I found, I found out that, you know, my patella shattered and my leg was fractured. So but all I did was, you know, if your shit stuck, I just pulled my shit back and started running. But every time I ran, I fell. I start hopping, then I get to the then I get to the road. When I get to the road, I'm thinking somebody gonna help me. That's when the people that the regular people they laughing at me and shit. Lady gonna tell me more than this stupid though. Another dude hit me. He hit. Me. I'm trying to grab onto his bike, and I'm telling him I'm just crying, talking about I use that man. Por favor, por favor, I use that man. That mean like please help me. I'm crying at this point, like tears in my eyes. They laughing at me. One of the dudes leading the pack catch up to me and he tried to hold me down. But I still got my shit that I have from, you know, from that fall. And then I got him up off me. He backed up a little bit and was just kind of waiting for his partner, but he was like walking towards me. I hit the I hit the fence and went back into the mountains. But as soon as I hit that fence, that was like a hill and I just started rolling down that motherfucker. And I just stayed in the mountains. I just went through all the little barbed wire traps and shit they had out there. I got my hands was fucked up. And I just stayed there hiding there. And then I just tried to keep making my way through the night. Just trying to get closer and closer down to the flatland. But they was following me with flashlights. They had little dogs and shit. It was people on a uh, little blowhorn talking about Donde esta Americano con rastas? Donde esta Americano con rastas? And that's like where the American at with the dreads, basically. So that's what really initially, like when I got to my 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 last location, I had got to like this little Pueblo. And then that's why I don't want to put them people out there, but they helped me. I had hid in their outhouse for like a whole, like I, two days. So one thing after following Hanif's story is that I realized that he is a man of God and seems to be a cool guy. And then, you know, you, you got to be a brave guy to even go on YouTube and tell people about something that happened to you to this magnitude. So um, um, 
um kind of this is my part one i'm gonna do a part two and you know add more commentary do more research and uh, get more insight on this situation but i just wanted to get the conversation started um be careful when on vacation in any country you're in not just in colombia because oh i got there are so many stories pouring in from guys all around the world that are finding themselves in these this very similar situations so i don't think it's just a significant significant to colombia but at this time it's a lot a lot of it happening in colombia and a lot more stories coming out so Guys, if you found this interesting, uh, if you found some value in this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, this helps me grow my channel. It continues to help me get more more eyes on the subject matters. It, it, I give a chance to give out more tips. Um, I'm going to be expanding. I'm going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes on what construction project that I'm doing and providing more value, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, you watch it is because of the value and that I provide. Hopefully, I'm doing that for you. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.